Australia's cost of living crisis has hit the bedroom this morning with a new report showing the fiscal crunch has put a dampener on baby making. New analysis by KPMG reveals Australia last year recorded its lowest number of births since 2006. Melbourne's north recording the lowest birth rate of any metropolitan area in the nation. And it's not the only news tied to the household bottom line this morning. The energy market operator has revealed a cold snap over the past three months has driven up power prices. There's a lot to get into. So let's go straight to our political reporter, Oliver Gordon, who, of course, joins us from Parliament House. Good morning again, Oliver. Some interesting stats there. What's driving this backslide in baby making? Well, James, I wouldn't want to comment on uh, any individual couple's decision to not jump into bed to uh, create some offspring, but certainly this KPMG report suggesting that uh, fewer couples are going down that path, or if they are going down that path, they're uh, taking adequate steps to uh, avoid pregnancy. Uh, the report's authors, this KPMG report, they're calling this a baby recession. Um, the amount of babies born last year, uh, almost the lowest in 20 years. Uh, we've had a look at some of the stats, had a bit of a dig into the stats. When we compare the amount of babies born uh, last year with the amount of babies born five years ago, we can see Sydney is uh, having the biggest decline. It's seeing about an 8% drop. Uh, that's followed by Melbourne, uh, the only capital city to not see a drop uh, in the amount of babies being born is Canberra. Um, so make of that what you will. The authors of this report are suggesting cost of living is certainly having a pretty big impact. It's a major driver. Household costs are a major driver, uh, driving decision making on whether to start having a family or to expand your family. Uh, we've got a quote here from one of the KPMG economists who was one of the report's authors. He's put it into context. He says, we haven't seen such a sharp decline, uh, such a sharp drop in births in Australia since the period um, of economic stagflation in the 70s, um, which coincided with the widespread adoption of the pill. Yeah, Oliver, some people will say uh, Canberra has uh, that record because there's not much else to do, but of course we know better than that. It's the clean air and uh, wonderful uh, living that does it. Uh, on the a separate proximity topic. Proximity to nature. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, on a separate topic, uh, this morning there's another report painting a grim picture for energy prices. Uh, just go through what it tells us. So these are a couple of reports that really um, illustrate how the weather interacts with our power prices and energy bills. Um, we can see that demand for electricity has been sky high in the last quarter and that is largely due to a cold snap. Uh, this cold snap also impacts what kind of energy can be created. Um, this cold weather makes it hard for wind and hydro to be created. Um, that increases demand for energy sources like coal and gas. Um, that's why we've seen uh, the, these electricity prices go up. Um, the electricity spot price up 23% from where we were last year. Uh, Climate Change and Energy Minister Chris Bowen uh, has acknowledged that this is a serious issue for households, this price issue, um, but he's maintained his view that uh, bringing more renewable energy into Australia's energy grid is ultimately the way to bring down energy prices in Australia. James. All right, Oliver Gordon there in Parliament House, thank you. Let's go to Paris now and major warnings have been issued for our athletes after French police revealed they're investigating the alleged gang rape of an Australian woman in the city. Tom Maddox is in the French capital for us this morning. Tom, it's a terrible case. Uh, bring us up to speed on what details we have. It's an awful story, isn't it, Lisa? So according to the local police union, a 25-year-old Australian woman had to seek refuge inside a kebab shop uh, in the uh, early hours of Sunday morning, the weekend just gone, in the 18th district of Paris, uh, a place known for its nightlife, its theatre, its cabaret. And she had allegedly, as you say, been raped by a group of five men um, the uh, police were called and she was taken then to hospital and it's understood that she initially wanted to get back on a plane as soon as possible back to Australia and, and didn't want to charge, uh, press any charges but she's um, been cooperating with investigators since and has remained in Paris and 
it's understood that those five men um, alleged uh, to have been in this, uh, involved in this rape are still on, on the loose. Uh, the Australian uh, chef de mission, Anna Mears, spoke about this incident earlier today. Our hearts go out to the to the woman involved, and we hope that she's being cared for and supported in the, in uh, the trauma that she's experienced. There's not a lot of detail and information that has come through, um, and what information we're passing on to our athletes is that security presence is really, really high, and that's in a, in order for them to be able to act as quickly as possible to keep them safe. And Lisa, it's not just uh, Australian athletes that are, uh, are being uh, told to be wary. It's also the media here in Paris. And we've got it confirmed uh, from Channel 9 this morning to the ABC that two members of uh, Channel 9's Olympic broadcast team here in Paris uh, were allegedly uh, assaulted or attacked, rather, in an attempted robbery on the outskirts of Paris yesterday afternoon. Uh, apparently, one person tried to snatch the backpack of one of those uh, tech staff members from the Nine broadcast team. They are reportedly OK, uh, and police are investigating, but I'm sure that uh, these incidents will just uh, seek, you know, further uh, imp uh, heighten the tensions here in the, in the French capital, Lisa. Yeah, and look, while those investigations go on, our athletes have been arriving. More of them are in town. They're gearing up for competition. They are. There's almost 300 uh, that have found their way into accommodation here in Paris. Uh, 300 of that 460 strong Australian team that will represent the country at these Olympics. Uh, our swimmers arrived today and, of course, great expectations on the shoulders of our dolphins. Uh, hopefully uh, they can uh, match or even beat uh, the feats of the Americans at this Games. Uh, but uh, they're not uh, too bothered by that pressure. I think it fuels us. Um, we're coming off the back of a World Championships where we topped the gold medal tally. Um, obviously, there's a bit of rivalry there that has been going around in the media um, with the US. But, I mean, we've put 41 athletes forward that have all qualified at trials the best we can. I know everybody's firing and ready to go. Elisa, tomorrow the Australian men's rugby sevens team, they, their Olympic campaign gets underway. Of course, we have the Matildas playing this week and then the opening ceremony on Friday. And tomorrow we find out who will uh, be the flag bearers for Australia in the opening ceremony. Uh, there's lots of money on Jess Fox, the canoe slalom champ, and also the Hockey Roos veteran in Eddie Ockenden uh, taking up that honour, Lisa. Yeah, we can concentrate hopefully on some good news stories coming out from our athletes. Thank you, Tom. OK, let's find out what's happening with the rest of the news. Emma. Thanks, Lisa. Director of the US Secret Service, Kimberly Cheetle, has resigned after admitting to security failures surrounding the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. Kimberly Cheetle had faced calls from both Democrats and Republicans to step down after a fiery congressional committee hearing. US President Joe Biden says he'll appoint a new director soon and thanked Ms Cheetle for her decades of public service. A large-scale police operation will commence in Logan, south of Brisbane, this morning as part of the investigation into the alleged murder of a 23-year-old woman. Police believe Kaisha Thompson was deliberately hit by a car last Friday after dropping her daughter off at daycare in Daisy Hill. A 24-year-old woman and 27-year-old man have been charged with murder. The union representing emergency department doctors claims the Royal Adelaide Hospital has failed to act on a workplace safety notice issued earlier this month. SafeWork SA had given management at the hospital till August to comply with the new notice to improve conditions for its workers. A happy update to a story we brought you yesterday. Tasmania's RSPCA has been overwhelmed with a number of people wanting to help to rehome more than 250 rescued Labradoodles. The Animal Welfare Group had reached an out-of-court agreement with the state's largest dog breeder on Friday and that resulted in the immediate closure of its facility and surrender of all its dogs. Mm. Let's take a look at the global markets. The Aussie futures are heading up. The Dow dropped off overnight and uh, the Australian dollars ticked up 66.2 US cents. Now, the American toy giant Mattel has announced the first blind Barbie. It'll come with a cane and sunglasses and will also have accessible features so that children with sight loss can play with it. It is being warmly welcomed by Vision Australia. 
I think it's a really exciting uh, day for the blindness and low vision community. It's so always exciting when businesses and organisations take steps to promote and foster uh, diversity and inclusivity.